Today, I am talking about Google Gemini Gems. Gems are essentially your own custom AI experts that live inside Google's Gemini AI Assistant. Think of each gem as a specialized expert you create for Gemini. For example, you could have a gem that acts as a writing editor, a travel planner, or a language tutor, whatever you need. In simple terms, a gem is like saving a detailed set of instructions for the AI, so it consistently behaves in a certain way or helps with a specific task. This means you do not have to retype long prompts or context every time the gem remembers its role and instructions. Gems are powerful because they let you save highly detailed prompt instructions for tasks you do often. Instead of writing the same complex prompt or explanation every time, you create a gem once. Later, using that gem is like running a saved program. The AI already knows the context and how to help. This not only saves time, but also ensures more consistent results. In short, Gems turn Gemini into a personalized AI that can act as your writing style editor, brainstorm buddy, tutor, planner, or almost any expert you can describe. To access Gemini is easy. You just search on Google for the word Gemini. This is the direct link. It looks like this. On the left side, you have the option to start a new chat or see previous chat conversations if you have chatted with Gemini before. Here you also have gems, similar to how ChatGPT has custom GPTs. Click on it and you can already see some custom gems made by Google that you can test and see how they work. Today, I will show you how to make your own. It is quite easy and does not need any coding knowledge. Click on the new gem button. In this new interface, we have a field for the name. This is just the name of your gem. Think of it like a job title, for example, prompt engineer or language tutor. When you read the name, you should immediately know what the gem does. Description is a short explanation of what the gem is for. It helps you remember why you created it and what problem it solves. One sentence is enough. You are not explaining how it works, only what it does. Instructions are the most important part. Here you explain who the gem is, what its job is, how it should behave, and how it should answer. Think of this as giving the AI a permanent role and rules. If the instructions are clear, you can talk to the gem normally later. Knowledge is where you attach files, like PDFs or images. Those files become the gem's reference or memory. The gem can read them and use them when answering. Example uses include a PDF, style reference images, rules, guides, or documents. If nothing is attached, the gem only uses your instructions. Preview on the right side is just a test area. Once you give the gem a name, you can type messages here to see how it responds, if your instructions work, and if you need to adjust anything. Nothing here is permanent until you click Save. When you click the Save button the gem is created, it appears in your gems list and you can reuse it anytime. Until you save, it is just a draft. So in short, the name is what it is, the description is what it does, the instructions are how it behaves, and the knowledge files are what it knows. Let's create a simple gem. Let's say I want a design brief builder. For the description, I will say that it helps turn basic design ideas into a simple and clear design brief. For the instructions, I will say that you help users turn a short design idea into a simple design brief. Let's test it really quick. Let's say I want a logo design for a coffee shop. When I submit it, it will start thinking because I have the thinking mode enabled. Since some information is missing, like the name and colors I want, it will ask me a few questions that I need to answer before it gives me a complete brief. So even if you do not know much about how to do design briefs, this will do it for you. This is just a simple example, and you should use gems for things you ask Gemini often. If you rarely do design briefs, there is no point in saving a gem since you do not save much time. Now for the instructions. Even if you are not an expert at writing instructions, you can use AI to write them for you. You have this magic pencil here that you can click to use Gemini to rewrite the instructions. Now I have more detailed instructions that I can edit to fit my needs. After you make some changes, you test again to see if it behaves how it should. You can always edit it later, even if it does not work perfectly on the first try. You can see the gem is not saved yet. Let's click Save. Now the gem is saved and it asks me if I want to start chatting or share it. Even if I close that window, the gem will appear here on the left. If I click on it, 
it will open that gem and I can start chatting. So let's test it. I want a steampunk logo called Pipe. Gemini starts thinking and begins asking me questions to help build the design brief. In the first step, it asks about objectives and goals. I say I want a casual logo and a highly detailed steam header. In step two, it asks about the target audience. In step three, it asks about scope and constraints, and I ask Gemini to pick one for me. In step four, it asks how I want the final files delivered and in what format. In the last step, it asks for tone and style. If you do not want to answer all these questions for each step, you can add instructions saying it should recommend something for each step and not ask you, just give ideas. Now we have a design brief, the kind you usually get when working with a client, with objectives, audience, tone, direction, and delivery details. We can even generate image ideas using Nano Banana. Let's say generate that logo from the brief for me. I get this result. It is not perfect, but it is not bad for a first generated idea. Now let's go back to gems and create a new one. This time, I wanna show you how to use frameworks. Frameworks are simple ways to explain to the AI who it is, what its job is, and how you want the answers, so you get clear and consistent results every time. CoStar is just an example of a framework. It is basically a checklist that is easy to remember where each letter stands for something. C for context, O for objective, S for style, T for tone, A for audience, and R for response. So in the instructions of the gem, you can paste them exactly like that. For context, it helps people with rough ideas. The objective is to turn them into a simple design brief. The style should be clean and practical. The tone should be friendly and direct. The audience is beginner creators and designers. For the response, it should ask for missing information and then give the design brief. Frameworks help you remember what you need to give as instructions. They are used everywhere, not just with AI. You see them in design briefs, marketing, storytelling, teaching, project planning, and even job interviews because they help people think clearly remember things more easily, and explain ideas in a structured way. RTF is another example of a framework, and it is one of the most beginner-friendly ones. Each letter stands for something. R is role, who the AI is. T is task, what you want it to do. F is format, how you want the answer to look. Care is another framework, and it is very clean and logical. C is context, what the situation is. A is action, what the AI should do. R is result, what the outcome should be. E is example, which helps guide the AI with a concrete case. Another one is the packed framework. P is persona, who the AI is. A is action, what it should do. C is constraints, the rules it must follow. T is tone, how it should sound. But you do not even need a framework for things to work. Using a framework just makes everything clearer and helps the AI make more sense of the instructions, which can lead to better results. If you do not want to complicate things, you can simply tell the AI who it is, what its job is, and how to answer. For most beginners, this is already enough to get good results. Let's put what we learned into practice. Let's create a prompt generator for a 3D cute animation style. For the description, I will put the same thing since I am lazy, but do not do that. I will use the CoStar framework for this example. I added context, objective, style, tone, audience, and a response that it should give me three different prompts so I can choose. Let's test it really quick. If I ask for a cute bunny, it seems to work. It gives me three long prompts. Let's save this gem and click start chat. Remember, you can also find the chats on the left. Now let's ask for a samurai turtle. After it finishes thinking, it gives me three long prompts. Let's test the first prompt. I go to Google Whisk since it can generate without that star watermark. I paste the prompt here. You can see it is using nano banana. You can choose different ratios and I will go with landscape. I can click generate up to three times to get a total of six images. I got the 3D cute style I was asking for. If something is not good, you can always edit the gem to improve it. Let's test the second prompt to see what we get. The results are not bad. 
So if you are working on a big project, it might be useful to create a custom gem for that project to make sure you get the same style, the same role, or a certain type of response. Let's go back to gems and create another one. Let's try to make a role-playing gem. Let's call it Funny Pirate Companion. Same for the description. For the instructions, I will use the RTF framework, so it should act like a pirate. Let's test it on the right side with a simple question to see how it reacts. You will notice that each time I ask a question, it starts thinking before answering. For role-playing, this kind of ruins the fun and we do not need something precise. So instead of the thinking model, I recommend using the fast model. Let's save the gem and click start to begin chatting. Now, instead of the pro version, I will use the fast one so it answers quickly. When I ask a question, it responds fast and acts like a pirate. Let's ask another question. The entire gem is now locked into that character and will always act like a pirate. This one is more for fun, but you can also create gems for learning a foreign language or for having philosophical conversations. Let's go back to gems and create more complex ones. This time I will make a fantasy game icon generator. I will add a description, and for the instructions I will use the RTF framework. I want it to be a fantasy game artist and a prompt engineer that studies my reference images and understands that style. For the task, I want it to generate one prompt. For the format, I want only one prompt written in natural language, and I included what it should contain. For rules, I added that the background should always be black, icons only, and to avoid brand names. This time, I will also use knowledge. I click on the plus button, then upload files, and I upload images for reference. I like this style of fantasy game icons, so I add eight examples. I select all of them and attach them to the gem knowledge. This should help the gem create prompts in that style so I can later use them to generate images. Let's save the gem and start chatting. Let's ask for a hammer made from ice. It gives me a long, detailed prompt for that icon. Now I can use Nano Banana and ask it to generate the icon using that prompt. As you can see, the style is similar to what I added to the knowledge. Let's copy the prompt and try it in Google Whisk. Since it is an icon, I will go with a square ratio and generate a few versions. Look at these game icons, they look pretty good. If for some reason the prompts are not how they should be, you can click on the three dots and edit the gem. You can remove or add different images or change the instructions. Let's go back to the gem and try a different icon, a shield made from wood, leaves, and a gem. And again, it looks very close to the style I added. I am quite happy with this gem. You can use documents like PDF files for knowledge. For example, I have here a simple PDF file with some animals and names, just to give you an example. Let's create a new gem. I will make a gem that uses this PDF file with zoo animals as its knowledge. By the way, if you cannot see the entire description, you can drag from this corner and then you can see it. I have instructions here that you can generate with Gemini or ChatGPT, or you can write them yourself. I added some rules not to invent animals or names and not to change the count. Now let's add the PDF. Before we do that, you should know about some limitations. These are different depending on whether you are a free user or you have the pro version. You can have a maximum of 10 files. Each file can be up to 100 megabytes. The free version supports around 50 to 100 pages, while the pro version supports approximately 1500 pages. The context window is also much bigger on pro. Think of the context window as the AI's short-term memory. The bigger it is, the more information it can keep in mind at once without forgetting older details. Let's continue and attach the PDF file, then save the gem. Now let's test it. In my PDF, I have zebras called Z, and there are 21 of them. Let's ask Gemini if it knows that. The answer is correct. So you can use all kinds of documents from your company, or maybe a PDF with prompt engineering instructions for video and image models, or any other type of document. The gem will use that as knowledge. If I ask something that is not in the list, it will tell me that it does not exist. You can also see links to the sources. If you have multiple PDFs, you can see exactly which source is used. You can click on it, 
open it, and see the category in the PDF. It is pretty cool. Let's go and create a new gem, something different. I want to create a visual detective. It should analyze an uploaded image like a detective and find clues and patterns. For the instructions, I want it to act like a detective and figure out where photos were taken, plus point out interesting clues that a human might miss. Basically, a deductive AI, your own Sherlock Holmes. Let's save the gem. Now it is time for testing. I will upload a photo of a bridge, and without adding anything else, I will just submit it and see what happens. It first describes what is clearly visible in the image, then it gives clues and details, and after that it gives logical deductions. For example, it suggests the location could be in a European capital city. At the end, it also tells me what it could not identify. Let's edit the gem to improve it so it gives a more precise location. It had a rule not to identify locations and people, so I will remove that because I want it to guess. It has better chances than me, even if it is not always accurate. It also had a rule not to give the exact address, so I will remove that too because I want an address when possible. Now I save the gem. Let's upload another photo and see what it can do now. You can see how it deduces the location is in Meteora, Greece. If I want even more info, I can ask it to search online to find the exact name and location. You can see it successfully finds the location and the name of the building. It is impressive how much AI has advanced. Now let me try the bridge again and see if it can find it. I want to find the city where it was taken. If I look at the end, you can see it now finds the location and the name of the bridge. So be careful what you share on social media, because now anyone can guess popular locations. That is all for today, and for this year since the holidays are coming. Thank you AI Titans and everyone who subscribed and supported this channel. Have a great day, and happy holidays.